always make that kind of an entrance. Um, I'm gonna, before we get started here, just with a show of hands, how many, how many builder developers do we have in the room here? Okay, how many realtors do we have in the room here? Okay, how many municipal um, workers do we have in the room here? How many people do we have in the room here that know someone with a disability um, that's affected every day? Put your hands up if you know anyone. So I'm going to come, I'm, I'm talking today from a place uh, that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, my cousin Tiffany was born um, 12 minutes dead. Uh, there was a lot of complications. Um, they were able to bring her back to life, and uh, they said, you know, she's going to live maybe 12 hours. And they said, maybe to the end of the day. Then it was to the end of the week. Uh, today she's 29 years old. Um, and the reason why I'm telling you this little bit of the story is, um, we've always been a bit of a kindred spirit, her and I. Um, you know, she's 29, um, uh, a body of a 29-year-old woman, um, but the mentality of a seven or eight year old. A real sweetheart, um, loves to interact. But as my uncle and aunt are getting older, what I was able to see over the years is, um, you know, they come and visit my home. Um, I'm able, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a former wrestler, so you know, I'll pick up Tiffany and I'll take her up the stairs and I'll take her to the washroom. Or I'll take her downstairs or I'll be outside with her or I'll carry her here or I'll do this or I'll do that. Um, and my uncle and aunt used to visit quite a bit, you know, to other family members' homes. What I'm finding is, is that they no longer can do that. And the reason they can't is, is uh, physically they're unable to do it, but more, uh, more of it is about not feeling that they can go there because if Tiffany needs to go to the washroom, they can't get her to the washroom or they can't stay with her there. Um, so things that we take for granted, um, like myself, I got up, I had you know, my nervous pee before my speech, and I scooted out the back there and went to the washroom. Not a problem. But what we fail to see is that sometimes simple little ch changes um, can make a huge difference to how people can live. Um, and my presentation today is going to be about inclusivity um, and about inclusive living. You can flip through that. Um, this is a little bit about who we are. Um, over the last 25 years, as you heard, we built about 10,000 new homes in the area under a different name brand, under East Forest Homes. Um, there's over 80 years of collective experience. Um, and the reason why I'm telling you this here is change won't happen unless it starts at the top. Um, Peter and myself really believe in this, and that's kind of what initiated all of this. Last October, I was asked to present at a, a, a age-friendly, I can't quite remember what it was, and. Um, from there, um, you know, Trudy was great. She came up and right away was sort of in my face and said, you know, you can make a real difference in this world, you know, and you can do this and this and this. And, and truthfully, until she did that, um, I wasn't really aware of it. I was living with it. Here's my cousin Tiffany. I'm carrying her up and downstairs. But really, you know, as a builder who built 10,000 homes, um, you know, really didn't understand what we were doing because you do what you do every day because you were taught to do it that way. And until you really sort of start thinking outside of the box, you don't make those changes. Thanks, please. Uh, you can skip this stuff. They can read it on the website. Next. <laughs> Next. So what is inclusive living? Visitable, adaptable, accessible. And I know I spelled it wrong. It's on purpose. Okay. Um, what do they all have in common? Able or all able bodies. And if we work together, um, we can make and change the conversation. Next. So Webster defines it as including everything. So inclusive living is including everything. Uh, so what is everything? Well, for today, we're talking about no step entry, at least one per dwelling, uh, main level minimum doorway width of 36 and a hallway of 43. A main level has an accessible half bathroom with a minimum of 1,500 mil turning radius. Seem pretty hard? Pretty simple, right? Not that difficult. 
I'm going to talk about our personal experience. So this was our project that we were doing on, on at, or are doing at 42 West Acres. So we started out, um, this was a site that we were going to put 40 units on. Um, and through the planning stage, so the raw land stage, we, it's an infill site. Um, so again, we were thinking, well, this would be great. Here's a community. Um, it's an older community. They've got you know, homes there that are two-story, back splits, bungalows. Um, there's people that are aging and want to stay in place. But if they can't stay in place, at least they can stay within the community. Um, so I challenged uh, Carlos in our office, um, who's our designer, uh, sort of like Noel is here. Um, I challenged him and said, hey, listen, these are the things that, that we need to be visitable. How are, you gonna, how are we going to implement this in our project here? Um, and they actually worked for us. So um, this site here has quite a great change. Um, and all along the back, and unfortunately I don't have a pointer, but the black dark line here, that's a retaining wall. Well, that ran across the whole entire site. Um, so I said to Carlos, wow, that's expensive. You know, uh, James was talking about, you know, what the builders firstly think about is expense. Oh, that's expensive. Single pane, double pane, triple pane, that's expensive, right? Because it is. It's all about economics at the end of the day. So what we were able to do, though, was take a look at the site, redesign it, reorient the buildings, take a look at the design of the buildings, um, and we changed them to incorporate um, all the main level, so there's nine units now on this site of the 27 uh, that will be visitable. So you're looking at this and you're saying, how the heck are those visitable? Well, if you look at the lower level, the whole site was graded so that anyone in a wheelchair, um, anyone with a disability, um, there's no stairs at all. Um, and these units on the bottom floor, all nine units are completely visitable. So the doorway is a, what they call a, a low profile threshold. The one thing that I will um, uh, let people know in here that some of the, the things that you have to work on is you have to get the right door manufacturer uh, because some of the low profile doors that are out there uh, are prone to leaking. Um, and it's just because, again, they're new, it's different. Um, so those are things that you want to want to make sure you get the right door door style in there. Um, you go to the next one here that gives you sort of more of a straight on view. Again, there's a covered porch um, for the lower level. So again, anyone that's in a wheelchair, um, you know, can be out of the out of the rain. Uh, next, and these are our floor plans here. Um, so you can see there's the turning circles that we've shown you all throughout. So it seems like a lot of work, but truly a little bit of planning can go a long way. Um, the site has, like I said, nine visible units uh, designed for it. Um, some of the problems that we're cur currently um, facing are we're at council. It's different. Um, council understands what it's about. We have the nibbyism, uh, not in my backyard. So we have some neighbors that are a little bit concerned. You know they. Well, these are affordable units, you know, who's moving in here, what's this visibility thing? So I think we need to do a better uh, job in communicating to people. That it's, it's about inclusivity. It's about everybody being able to sort of use, um, live together. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, orange, blue, in a wheelchair, um, you know, drive a motorcycle, it really doesn't matter. It's about fitting in. Next. So this is a, a sort of a snapshot. Um, so I challenged Carlos just to make it visible. Um, and this is what I love about our designers out there, like the Knowles of the world, um, Alexander is a planner. Um, you, you, you challenge him with one little thing, you start changing the conversation, and he came back, and actually all of these units will have the option um, of being adaptable and accessible, um, which I'm really proud of, and I'm proud of Carlos, because again, he had designed units for, for this before, and he designed them because I said to him, I challenged him and said, this is what I need you to do. I'd never challenged him to take it to this level. And once I did, this is what we had. Um, so again, uh, proud, of, proud of my designer, but um, proud of our industry because if we put our minds together, we can really, really make the difference. Next. So in conclusion, if there's a will, there's always a way. 
inclusive living is about allowing people to have a choice to fit into society with as little difference as possible. We're all able people that have been blessed with many skills and talents. Um, if we put our able body, our able minds together, um, we can work on the challenge of inclusivity. Uh, we can achieve visible living. It's really, really easy. It's not difficult. Um, it's time to change the conversation. I really, uh, unlike some of the panel members here, I don't believe you want to legislate it because anytime we've legislated anything, we always screw it up. We forget something, something doesn't get done. If we get in front of the right people, if you get in front of the builders, if you get in front of the industry, if you get in front of the counselors, um, we will change the conversation. And that's the best way to do it because everybody feels like they're a part of the solution as opposed to being regulated. Thank you very much, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll, uh, I'll be there in a minute.